Welcome to the Rooted in Health and Wellness podcast with your host, Heather Harris. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 18. I'm going to be talking today about how to help yourself and how to help your immune system and, and how to help prevent getting sick, possibly, this as we head into the cold and flu and virus season here this fall and winter. I'm going to, um, first and foremost, I want to put out a disclaimer that I'm not a doctor and I'm not here to cure or prevent or treat any diseases, viruses, anything. Uh, the information that I'm giving out is purely for educational purposes. Um, I will not be giving out dosages of anything because again, that's going to be really different for everybody. Um, and I'm just gonna be talking about, you know, viruses, kind of how they're transmitted um, and how we recover from them. And then just talking about ways to help build up your own body, your own immune system to help again, prevent getting sick, or maybe you get sick, but it's not as bad as, you know, a lot of other people are getting sick. I know back when COVID hit, I didn't get it for like a couple of years. And then I got it and I was kind of sick for one day, but not even that day, it wasn't even that bad. It was mostly a headache. And then after that, I felt completely fine. So I think a lot of it, again, when people are, you know, even with like COVID and things, the people that really got hit by it bad were people that, you know, unfortunately are immune compromised or not taking care of themselves. And so I'm just kind of here to help educate you and help you to, you know, really work at taking care of yourself and, and hopefully again, prevent from getting sickness, or if you do get sick, it's not so bad um, and you can get through it quickly. Uh, so again, that disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm just here to provide you with educational information. And again, I have a little bit of a different setup today. I'm hoping that the sound and everything will be okay. Um, I'm trying not to have my mouth right up into the microphone, but a lot of times it doesn't sound as good. So we're going to see here. I'm trying a few different things. Um, the first thing I do want to talk about, you know, is viruses. Viruses I really think viruses are going to be, you know, they're going to come and go. Um, every, you know, we, we're going to probably continually get kind of new viruses that they find, like COVID, you know, that we got a few years ago. Um, they can be, viruses are, are transmitted. They can be airborne through bodily fluids. You can touch a doorknob and, you know, catch and, and get a virus or something. Uh, they, and viruses really look to get into our DNA cells and then they replicate. And they're really difficult to get rid of. Um, if you've ever heard of Epstein-Barr virus, it's something that, you know, if you had mononucleosis when you were younger, a lot of times people will develop Epstein-Barr virus as they get older, which I have. And Epstein-Barr virus will be with me forever. Um, and, and those certain viruses, I think even COVID, you know, this long haul COVID syndrome that they're talking about, a lot of times these will lay dormant in your body and you'll have them forever. It's how you, again, take care of yourself that they don't kind of um, come out and get active again, and you don't have kind of a flare-up of those viruses. Um, so I'm constantly working for myself to kind of keep that Epstein-Barr virus at bay. And I know that for me, like if I get overly stressed or overly tired, or I'm just go, go, go all the time, um, which is, tends to be my personality, that that virus then can kind of come out and I... it knocks me down like big time. I get super tired, um, super exhausted, and then I have to rest. So it forces me kind of to rest. So viruses, again, they can lie dormant and then flourish when the immune system is in overdrive. You know, again, if you're constantly pushing things and you're going, 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 and you're, you know, you're not eating good or you're not exercising, you're not getting enough sleep, you're really stressed out, then those viruses, again, can kind of flare up. Um, and they can lead to a lot of issues, autoimmune diseases, cardiovascular issues, brain-based issues, um, obesity, pulmonary issues, cancer, you name it, those viruses can lead to other things, again, if not kind of kept in check. In check. They can make us feel, you know, you know how you feel like when you get the flu. It's feeling run down, feeling tired, very fatigued. You can have brain fog. Um, you know, achy, pain, uh, low immunity, all of those kind of symptoms can be 
from having you know, a virus or being sick. So there are four steps to recovery from a virus, four steps. You want to boost your immune system, it would be number one. Number two, you want to try to stop the replication of that virus. Number three, you want to try to kill that virus off. And then number four, you want to try to recover from the damage. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about today is just things that we can do to help boost our immune system or keep our immune system healthy. Um, and those basics that I'm going to first talk about and that I feel like I've probably talked a lot about in other podcasts and I'm going to continue to talk about because again, I'm, I really want to provide sound information. I don't want people to one, live in fear of viruses and feel like, oh, I can't go out of my house. Now, of course, I want to say there are certain things that we should all take, you know, and, and as precautions and do more of when, you know, in this time of year when we're headed into cold and flu season. Obviously, washing your hands is a big one. You know, if we just washed our hands more, that would probably, you know, with just soap and water, a good soap and water, you know, um, I think that's important. You know, practicing respiratory hygiene, you know, covering your nose, your mouth, you know, with a tissue or, you know, I tell my kids in their elbow when they're coughing and sneezing. You know, those are just basic things that we can be doing. Avoiding touching your face after touching a lot of, you know, things. If you've been at the grocery store or whatever, you know, touching things, just avoid, avoid touching your face and your eyes and your nose. Um, you know, staying home when you're sick. I think a lot of times, especially if we're, you know, very type A perfectionist people, we feel like we got to go, go, go. And no matter what, I got to just keep pushing and I got to go to work. And, and, and really, you know, I think, again, a lot of sickness would be prevented if we just stayed home when, we, when we're sick, take care of ourselves, rest, and, and, you know, just kind of not be around other people and not passing on, you know, again, your cold or your flu. A big thing, again, is a basic is maintaining a healthy diet. Um, we're going to get on and probably kind of more into December and January talking more about nutrition. But uh, maintaining a healthy diet, you know, that's, it, that's whole foods. That's where I come from, whole foods. Diets, you know, rich in fruits and vegetables and lean protein, you know, lean meats, poultry, fish, you know, healthy fats. If you can really focus on eating less processed foods, less sugar, it's going to be huge for, immune, for your immune system. It's really difficult if you're eating a higher processed or higher sugar intake diet, it's going to be hard to kill off a virus. It's going to be really hard and it's actually going to help the virus replicate more. So the more processed foods, the more sugar you eat, the more that virus is going to replicate, okay? It's going to be hard and difficult to kill that off. And we're going to get a little bit more into the diet here in a minute. But making sure you stay hydrated, drinking plenty of water um, is, is very, very important, obviously, again, to um, help your body function properly and maintain a healthy immune system. Getting regular exercise is actually really good, you know, for your immune system. Now, I'm not saying that you want to go out and, you know, beat your body up and do a lot of high intensity interval training and a lot of these high intensity classes. I'm not saying that you have to do that. And especially, you know, if you're already in a stress, your body's already in a stress situation and you are, you know, already kind of dealing with other health issues, the last thing I necessarily want you to do is go and beat yourself up. You know, once in a while, a hit, pro, a hit workout is fine, but constantly doing that pounding, especially a lot of running and that kind of thing too, constantly doing that pounding, that's actually going to wear you down more. And, um, and so I'm just talking about, you know, doing some weightlifting, some walking, um, yoga, you know, Pilates, all those kind of things, especially, you know, if you feel like you're going to get sick, you know, we're talking more about, you know, trying to boost your immune system and prevent yourself. But if you're starting to feel sick, don't push yourself at the gym. That's not the time to go and push yourself at the gym. That's the time to relax a little bit more, to just maybe go for a walk outside, get some sun, you know, if the sun's out, some vitamin D, you know, um, just maybe do some stretching, some mobility work, some yoga. That is not the time to push yourself because that's actually going to probably not help and make things worse. 
you know, making sure you get adequate sleep is so important. We just kind of got off a whole few podcasts all about sleep. And so making sure that you're really aiming for that seven to nine hours of quality sleep for your body to rest and recover and heal. Okay. Don't discount that sleep. Managing your stress, chronic stress can weaken your immune system. Now, listen, everybody's got stress. This day and age, it's really hard to not, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't have stress or you can't, you know, let it go or, you know, whatever. I'm saying, how do you manage that stress? When it happens, how, how do you deal with it? What are the practices that you have in place to take care of that stress? Because chronic stress, and I'm talking chronic stress from things outside, but also like inside, if you've chronically got high blood sugar, chronically have high blood pressure, chronically have high cholesterol, those are stresses on the body too. So, you know, if you're constantly beating your body up, I love exercise, like I've said, and I've talked all about it and the importance of it. But if you're chronically or constantly beating yourself up, constantly, you know, running and constantly doing these high intensity classes, again, that's, it's a, it's a, it's a chronic stress on the body. Again, exercise can be a a good stress, but if your body is already under a lot of stress, it doesn't know it doesn't understand that it's a good stress. It just looks at it as stress. And too much, again, can wear your body down and wear your immune system down. You know, I, I kind of going back, avoid close contact with sick individuals. If you know someone's sick, just try to minimize your contact with them. Now, obviously, like I'm a mom. My youngest son actually just had a cough. It was like a weird, not even a cold. He had no other symptoms, no fevers, acting fine, but just a cough. And um, I, you know, obviously I'm going to be around my son, you know, I'm not going to like try to keep my distance from him. You know, um, I may just kiss him on the forehead or the cheek, you know, instead of the lips when, you know, goes to bed at night just to avoid, you know, anything, but I'm still going to be around him, you know? And so that's, again, kids are going to bring home things all of the time. And so it's just about, again, trying to take care of myself so that I, you know, hopefully don't get what they have, or if I do, it's not so bad. And then practice safe food handling, you know, washing your hands and cook surfaces thoroughly and cook meat, um, meat to safe temperatures to prevent foodborne illnesses. So this is a going, again, a little towards more towards foodborne Ill- illnesses, um, but it's still good to practice safe food handling. So again, bat basics. I'm always going to go back to that. You have to have a good diet. You have to exercise, not a lot, but some eat, you know, sleep well and, and handle that stress. Those are going to be your basics to preventing yourself from, you know, getting sick. And there's no supplement, I'm going to tell you, and I'll talk a lot about supplements in future podcasts and stuff, ones that I love. I do love supplements. And I've said it over and over though, supplements are to supplement an already healthy diet. Um, So you've got to focus on your nutrition, your diet first, and then if you still need certain vitamins or minerals or things, then we kind of supplement with those. And usually I do that by testing, you know, too. Um, I really am a person of test, don't guess. Um, I've said before, but I've had too many people that come in and they're on a boatload of supplements because this practitioner told them to take this, this person told them to take this, and they're still not feeling well. So my way of going about things is let's do some testing. Let's find out exactly what you need. And I think you know, that, that to me works the best. Um, as I said, I, I think that diet is super important. And if we can get all the vitamins and minerals through a good varied diet, then that is, I think the way to go. Um, not always does that happen though. I will say I eat a very good, very, very varied variety diet. And I did a test a while ago, and I'm actually getting ready to do it again to test all my vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And even though I really had a good diet, I still had several deficiencies. So I know that I need to supplement with those certain vitamins and minerals. And so, again, eating a lot of fruits and vegetables to get a lot of minerals, vitamins, antioxidants. Antioxidants are going to obviously help boost your immune system. I, I, you know, aiming for a variety of colors, and um, that's also super important. Again, we'll go on and into a lot of these things in future podcasts. Um, Again, hydration, limiting added sugars and processed foods. But I'm going to talk now about 
if you're doing the basics, okay, you're doing the basics and you want to add on a little bit more, you know, as you go into cold and flu season, you know, like I kind of do myself, I don't take supplements all the time. I just, I add in certain things at certain times that I know that I'm going to need them more. Now, there are certain things that I think, you know, probably most people could use every day. And again, I'm giving general information here. I can't, if you need more help and you want something more individualized, then please contact me. I'll leave all my information below. And while you're there, could you just hit the subscribe button or the follow button if you're listening on the podcast? Subscribe if you're watching the YouTube channel. It would help me out so much. Um, I'm really trying to grow the community. I've I've got a lot of work to do to put out good, better YouTube videos and better podcasts, and I'm slowly going to work at that. But I would love if you could help me out and subscribe and share with anybody that you know could benefit or share on your own social media. That would I would really appreciate that. But I'm going to talk about certain supplements that I think are good um, or certain things that are good for, as again, we go into this cold and flu season. No dosages. Everybody's different. But these are just some products that I always have on hand so that I know, again, I can grab them if I need them. And I'm going to start off first with some basics here that I think, again, everybody could, um, you know, benefit from. And I'm going to talk about foods that you can get them in, and then I'm going to show supplements that, you know, if you don't get enough through foods. Certain basics, though, is a multivitamin. Now, I'm going to be honest, as a dietitian, I go back and forth about multivitamins. I used to say, like, oh, everybody, you know, should take a really good quality um, multivitamin. And when I talk about supplements, I'm talking about supplements that are from good third party tested for heavy metals and things, supplement companies. I'm not talking about a lot of supplements that you're going to find at Costco or your grocery store or your pharmacy. You know, a lot of those have not been really tested for heavy metals. And so I think that it's super important to get them from good companies um, and good quality companies. And so I do work with several companies. So if you ever are looking for something, you know, leave me a message, send me an email and uh, I can help you out. But I, I, a multivitamin, you know, I would say a good quality multivitamin is usually good to kind of cover people, you know, if they're not meeting all their vitamin mineral, you know, needs. It's usually a good thing to cover people. But I'm also going to say, I've got people that take multivitamins, we test them, and they're still deficient on certain vitamins and minerals. And so then we have to, you know, specifically use those vitamin minerals. But usually a good multivitamin is good to have into your arsenal. A vitamin D. Now, vitamin D, again, we know a main source is from the sun, you know, so trying to get out and get it sunlight. You can also find it in a lot of fatty fish, some fortified dairy products. Um, but I'm going to tell you, it's, it's really difficult for people, even if they're out in the sun, to get enough vitamin D. Um, they may not absorb it in their body. They may have a gene where they're not absorbing the vitamin D well. I know I actually did an experiment over the summer. I kind of did take, I took less vitamin D because I was outside a lot. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to take it like every two or three days. And I tested my vitamin D at the end of summer. Now I was outside all the time. I was outside like every day in the summer and for a long time. Um, I live on a farm. I do a lot of work outside. So I really thought, you know, I would not, it wouldn't be a problem. My vitamin D would be good. I tested at the end of the summer and it was in the 30s. And that is low. You want your vitamin D to be between, be between 50 and 80. And so mine was in the 30s and I was outside every day. So it goes to show you that even getting sunlight every day for everybody, not, not necessarily is, is going to be enough for everybody. A peop, especially people with darker skin have even more trouble usually absorbing vitamin D. So trying to get through food is difficult too or get enough. So this is one that most people could supplement with. Again, you want to get tested. You do want to get tested. Make sure you're asking your doctor for that. Um, but it is a good one to get tested and then to supplement with. And you really, if you are not on blood thinners, so please listen, if you're not on blood thinners, it's good to do vitamin D plus K with a K, um, vitamin K. So that helps with the absorption of the vitamin D. 
Now, there's several that I've used. I for many years I used one called K Force by Orthomolecular. Excellent product. It's just vitamin D and K. Um, and then I've been using lately, and I'm going to try to put these up here. Hopefully, hopefully I don't know. I'm not a good like on this yet on YouTuber, and I. From what I've heard, you can't link supplements in the description box from what I've heard. So I'm not sure if the sun is just too much on that. But this is called Health Jevity is the company, and it's Protect Plus 5. This has actually got D and K, and it's also got vitamin A, vitamin E, and estrogen. This one I started taking recently because it's excellent for your bones. And preventing osteopenia and osteoporosis, and I'm of that age. So, if you are looking for something for the bones, that's great, but it also has 5,000 IUs of vitamin D and 300 micrograms of K2. Um, so, very good, excellent supplement, and something that I do take now every day. Um, and as regards to, again, dosages, I'm, I'm not going to give dosages out here because everybody can be different. And I can figure out though, if you need and you wanna make an appointment and you wanna help with supplements or vitamin D in specific, specifically, I can help you figure out how much would be good for you. But again, that's one you wanna get tested. Um, the second thing that I think is super important, obviously, is vitamin C. Vitamin C is this time of year. Now, it's one that we can get through a lot of fruits and vegetables. Oranges, we know, strawberries, kiwi as an excellent source. I love kiwis. and. I might do a whole podcast just on kiwis alone because such a great fruit that doesn't get talked about much and there's so many benefits to it. But, but bell peppers, excellent form of vitamin C. So you can get through lots of fruits and vegetables, grapefruit, um, you know, get your vitamin C through, but it's still sometimes hard. And so, you know, I do always have a supplement on hand and I, the one I'm using right now, vitamin C, you know, I, I, I always have, I, I'm always trying different ones. This just happens to be, again, the one that I'm using right now. I can't, again, I'm not sure if this is showing up. It's really hard for me to tell, and I apologize if it's not. But this is a thorn vitamin C. It's ascorbic acid with citrus bioflavonoids, and I do really like it. Um, and so I do always have this on hand. So that, you know, as I'm going into, like I said, fall and winter, I will take that. And then sometimes if I do start to feel something coming on, I may even double that um, and take two of them instead of one and go up to like one, um, one gram. So that, again, I'm just kind of helping to boost my immune system. So vitamin C, we've talked about a multivitamin, vitamin D, vitamin C. The fourth basic kind of supplement is zinc supplement. And zinc is really essential for a healthy immune system. It can be found in foods like lean meats, poultry, seafood, nuts, seeds, and some whole grains. And again, if you're eating a well-balanced diet, you may not need to supplement with it. Um, I have done testing. I actually know that I need it. And especially this time of year, I make sure that I take it. And I also know that I need one with copper to balance out the zinc. Some people only need zinc. Some people need both zinc and copper. So again, that's where testing is super important. But you could just do like there's zinc lozenges that you can get that, you know, you, you take. Um, and I, I'm going to do a caution though. With zinc, it is not something you want to take on an empty stomach. In fact, I usually tell people, you want to take it with a meal and maybe eat it in the middle of your meal even. I know that that's what I have to do. Even if I've taken it in the, oh, I'm sorry, a bug just literally flew on my face. Of course, there can never be anything that goes without a hitch on the podcast. But um, I know that if even if I take it at the beginning of a meal, that um, I can, I can still kind of feel sick to my stomach. So it can cause you to feel sick to your stomach. So if you're ever have taken zinc and like, oh no, I can't take that. Maybe it's because you ha were taking it on an empty stomach or even before a meal. So I usually eat a little bit and then I take it. Um, this is again, the one that I use. It's by Claire Labs and it does have zinc and copper in it as well as some C, vitamin C and B6. So I really like this one. Um, it's 
one of my favorites. In fact, I have not used anything else but this. A lot of other things, you know, vitamin C, you can take different ones and that kind of stuff. But I really like this formula. I like how much of zinc and copper it has in it, and it really works for me. Um, but again, you can just get some zinc lozenges or something, even at your health food store or something, and just take that. You don't necessarily need the copper in it, although again, it does help balance it out. And um, you don't want to get, you know, too much zinc and too little copper either or vice versa. So that's the zinc copper that I take or the zinc that I take. Omega-3s. I think omega-3s are always important as well. Um, you know, omega-3s, you know, a healthy fat, healthy um, fats that are found again in a lot of your fatty fish like salmon, but they're also found in flax seeds. Um, that's super important. And you can, there's a great test actually that I'll talk about in the future that tests like your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, tests for inflammation, and excellent one to see to make sure you're getting enough. Most of the time when people test that, they're not getting enough omega-3s. It's also just super important for our cardiovascular health. And so it is something that I take on a daily. This is um, the Ortho Omega by Ortho Molecular. I love Ortho Molecular products. This is a good one. This is capsule form. I actually take the oil. I put it in my uh, smoothie every morning and take that. But this is the capsule form. Just a great thing for people to kind of, again, cover themselves, help with the immune system, but it also has a lot of other health benefits. And you'll hear me talking a lot more about omega-3 fatty acids as we go along. And then the last thing that's kind of a basic supplement, again, we've talked about vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, um, omega-3s, and a multivitamin. Those are kind of the basics. But then probiotics, I think, are really important. You know, probiotics are the beneficial bacteria that support a healthy gut microbiome. Now, I want to have a caveat to this. I think that if you're struggling, if you're someone that's struggling and you get sick a lot and you're, you know, you're like, Heather, I am taking care of myself and stuff, but I'm, you know, constantly getting sick. I have a client right now that she has been sick a lot and, you know, I am really concerned about her. And I really think that's important then to look at your gut and what's going on in your, your microbiome and getting that tested possibly, you know, doing a stool test. Um, there's also a great organic acids test is a urine test. Um, those are great tests to find out what's going on. Is there an overgrowth of bad bacteria? Is there not enough good bacteria? There's um, so many things that we can look at on those tests to find out and, and kind of get your gut healed. Because again, 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So if your gut is off and not good, then that could be possibly causing or contributing to you know being sick a lot. So I think that it's super helpful. Now, probiotics, and we're going to do a whole podcast on probiotics because there's a lot to talk about those, and I'm not going to go into detail in this one, but they are, they are overall tend to be good for keeping your gut microbiome healthy and that good bacteria built up. But if you find that you're taking a probiotic and you feel worse, what I would say is then there's something going on in your, your digestive system, in your gut that we need to look at. Um, so I tend to not recommend certain probiotics until someone has still, like done a stool test and we look at their bacteria and then what they need and make it specific for what they need. Um, but I do think, you know, if you're taking, usually a standard probiotic is lactobacillus bifidobacterium strains. Usually that one tends to be, you know, helpful for people. And again, helpful to build up the good bacteria to again, help with your immune system. So those would be, the basic ones that I think are super important, okay, to keep your, your immune system well. And again, I forgot to bring a probiotic out here, but I use different ones. Uh, and again, I don't want to go into specific ones here because everybody's going to need different things. But usually a lactobacillus bifidobacterium is a good one. So I'm uh, sorry, I'm looking through my notes because I want to make sure I cover everything. But there are some other things too that you could have in your arsenal for supplements. So if you feel like something is coming on. One thing I want to say too, I don't want to forget because I wrote a little star here and asterisk by it, is to not forget is that in your food, use different herbs and spices in your food to cook with. Don't be afraid 
to use those because there's so much benefit from garlics, garlic, garlics, garlic, onions, you know, using those foods in your, um, in your, those are very prebiotic, actually, they're prebiotic, they help feed the good bacteria. So using those foods in your cooking is very beneficial. Now, again, I'm, I'm giving general information because not everybody can do garlic and onions if their gut is not good. And so getting that gut good, and then maybe they can add those garlic and onions in. I know I was one of those people for a while until I got my gut healthy. Um, but adding in other herbs and spices too, like, you know, oregano, a good organic dried oregano, um, thyme, rosemary, those are all such good herbs and spices that you can add in to add flavor to your food, but they're also very good for your immune system, for your gut. Um, they're very, very um, gut healthy, you know, or, or will help your um, gut be good. So that those are little things I just want you to remember is just adding in those kind of things, turmeric, you know, ginger, those are other good ones, you know, making a tea out of them and drinking that. Those are all going to be good and immune boosting. Some other things that I just kind of want to add in, and I don't have actually everything here, but like if you are getting a cold, let's say, or sore throat or a cough, things that I always have on hand and, you know, my kids, I will have them do too. My son that just had the cough, I've been having him drink, is... Um, either slippery elm. So I have actually here the slippery elm bark that I buy. Maybe if I hold it, yeah, kind of that way. Slippery elm bark. Um, that That is, this is just like in a powder form. I add some of this to some boiling water and, you know, kind of let it boil and then simmer and make a tea. I'll add in a little bit of raw organic honey to it and some cinnamon even sometimes. And my kids actually love it and love the taste of it. And so that is very, very helpful for soothing the throat and um, getting rid of coughs. And I, I can't tell you the last time I've ever like given my kids cough medicine or anything because usually the slippery elm bark will help. Another tea though, that if you didn't wanna like buy the actual slippery elm bark or just go buy the powder is this organic throat care tea. Maybe if I hold it this way, does that, is that better? The organic throat care tea by traditional medicinals. Um, this is really good. It's good tasting. Again, if you like teas, I love tea. And so I'm, I will sip on this every once in a while even, and I, I love the taste of it. But especially if I am feeling anything in the throat or a cough or anything, um, I love this because it has organic licorice root, organic slippery elm bark in it, um, and then organic marshmallow root, and then organic wild cherry bark, fennel fruit, cinnamon bark, and orange peel. So a nice kind of fall tea anyway, but really, really helpful and soothing for the throat. So something that I always have on hand. The other thing that like, oh, I forgot a couple of things I just realized, but one thing too that I always have on hand is L-lysine. So if you, again, I don't know if you can see this. This is just a vitamin shop brand. It's just a, it's no, nothing special, but this is L-lysine. I always have this on hand. If you're someone that gets cold sores, now I've never actually had a cold sore, but if you have a cold sore, that is a herpes virus. Shingles, those are herpes viruses. Those kind of viruses, L-lysine though, responds really well to, it really helps um, kind of get rid of that cold sore, get rid of your, you know, any kind of herpes virus. So I do always have this on hand in case we, you know, have anything like that or any kind of herpes virus, L-lysine is something very good to have on hand to kind of help kill that off, really. And the other things I was gonna say and I forgot is like a grapefruit seed extract or citricidal drops. Um, if you've ever heard of fire cider, that's really popular. You can buy fire cider shots or you can make your own. You can look it up and it's usually just a mixture of cayenne pepper, um, apple cider vinegar, and water, apple cider vinegar and water. And you make a little shot of that. And a lot of times that really helps, you know, like kill off anything that you might have coming, like a virus or anything. But it's also good grapefruit seed extract or citricidal drops. I always have those on hand to add into something like that fire cider shot and you drink that and it really does kill off things. Um, but just even that apple cider vinegar, cayenne pepper and water, that's a really good uh, mixture to make to drink. Now, again, some people may not be able to stomach it or you know, could cause them acid reflux. So again, it depends on the person, 
but usually that is a really good one to um, to just be able to drink and take a shot and kind of help prevent, but also build your immune system or kill anything off. And then the last thing I was going to talk about too is melatonin. You know, I've talked about that in just the last podcast, in fact, and melatonin in micro dosages, maybe one, two, maybe three milligrams at night can actually be very much act as an antioxidant and also help with the immune system, not to mention to help you to sleep. If you need sleep, magnesium and melatonin, you know, again, melatonin, small dosages, magnesium, that can help calm you down, help you to sleep. Magnesium is also really good for, and I hadn't mentioned that, that's usually one of my basics too, is that that magnesium will help you to just relax if you're in pain and or if you're achy. That can really help with aches and pains is magnesium. And I did not bring that one. Oh, yes, I did. I apologize. I love this one, Magnesium Breakthrough by Bio-Optimizers. And why I like it so much, there's so many different kinds of magnesiums out there, and this has seven different of the magnesium. So it helps with a lot of things. But this one is, is an excellent one and the one that I do always have on hand and use, um, especially at nighttime. So that, I think, wraps it up. There are a lot of other supplements. There's colloidal silver we could talk about. But those are the certain ones that I think are the best to have on hand. Oh, I'm going to mention one other thing that I don't want to forget is that if you are really like, if you're feeling yourself getting sick and, you know, I love to have all these hands on hand. These are the basics. These are the ones I tend to use the most. But if I really feel like something's coming on, I do always have this wellness formula by Source Naturals on hand and it's got everything in it. It's it's all herbs and, and vitamins and minerals in it. Again, a good one. You have to take a lot of these though. So for a lot of people, they may not like that. You have to take, it's usually four to six capsules um, and you can take it every three hours if you want, but uh, I don't, it says do not exceed 24 capsules a day, but that's a lot of capsules, but I will tell you it works. It really will knock it out of you. And, um, and so it is something that I never go without because if I really need it, which is not very often, but if I do, I will take these again. It's about four to six capsules. You can do every three hours and it will knock it out of you. It's got a lot of good ingredients. So you can look it up though, because it's a long list here. And I don't even know if you guys could read it from, again, the sun is shining here. And so I'm not so sure. I'm not, yeah, it's really bright. So I don't think it's going to be able to read it. But Wellness for me by Source Naturals, again, another good one. So I think I got everything. I covered everything. If there's anything else, please feel free to leave questions below, your comments. I will you know, always love to hear those and any feedback I would appreciate. Um, and yes, I think that I did cover it all. I wanted to make sure on all my notes. So I think that will be it for today. Please stay tuned though. The next couple of podcasts are going to be fun ones. I have planned, I want to do a podcast on a gift guide for your health enthusiast. I've got a great list of gifts that I think would be great. Some that are under 50, then 50 to 100, and then over 100. So if you, you know, as we come up to Christmas, if you're looking for something different or for gifts for, you know, your loved ones, your family, friends, uh, please check out that podcast or look for it because I want to be doing that either next or I might do next um, a podcast on going into the holidays, kind of how do you prepare yourself? Um, You know, a lot of people, especially fitness enthusiasts, you know, get worried about gaining weight or, you know, all the food and you know, you're not as active and that kind of thing. So I'm going to do a podcast on kind of how to prepare yourself as we go into these holidays. So I hope you stay tuned. Again, you can hit that notifications bell so that you never miss a uh, video or a podcast. And again, please share with anybody that you could benefit, that you think would benefit and subscribe or follow. I would so appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much for coming and for being here and listening. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.